Hello and welcome to Introducing Subject Glossary for Office 365. This is SharePoint Edutech's latest Windows 8 app and allows users to be able to read information from a SharePoint list which is customised towards a glossary. Subject Glossary for Office 365 allows users to read information from a custom-made SharePoint list. Users can add, edit and delete subject glossary terms from within the app create new subject glossaries on the fly and even import a whole list of terms through our CSV import feature. I have subject glossary for Office 365 open here. So what I'm going to do is just log into our 365 demo site. I'm going to click the remember me function because I want it to log me in for every subsequent run me app that I do. I'm going to click log in and immediately what we're going to be displayed with is the list selection dialog. Now what this is going to do is go through our site that we specified a minute ago and it's going to pull in every single list from that site. Now what we can do is go up to biology glossary what we have here and it's going to give us a tick. Now what that means is that it's gone through that list and checked whether the columns and the formulas are all valid for us to use it as a subject glossary so that it displays all the information in the right way. We also get the option of creating a subject glossary so if you didn't have any valid lists there or say you um, just wanted to create a, a new subject glossary on the first load then you have that option to do it. For now I'm just going to click continue on the biology glossary. All the terms from the biology glossary have now been loaded into the app. As you can see on the left we have a list of all the different terms and we can flick through these uh, using our mouse or if you're on a touch enabled Windows 8 device you can flick through these using your finger. On the right hand side we're given the term description. At the top of the screen we have our letter index view. All glossaries are usually grouped by letters so why should it be any different in this environment? So if I go to A all the letters beginning with A will be grouped and listed in front of me. If I go to F the same is true. If I go to a letter that isn't highlighted with the white highlighting then I'm told that the term doesn't exist there are no terms in that letter group but I get given the option to add one anyway. If I go back to all, all my different terms are displayed once again. At the top right hand side of the screen you'll see that we have a user information area. It gives me my username, it gives me the site that I'm currently logged into and it also gives me information about the web part that is available for subject glossary for Office 365. SharePoint Edutech offer a web part for subject glossary which is available on 2010 on-premise, 2013 on-premise and also SharePoint Online. This is really useful for being able to use subject glossary across a variety of different platforms. For example, if you're not on a Windows 8 enabled device, you're still able to use it on your SharePoint solution. I'm now going to show you how to add a term using subject glossary for Office 365. I'm going to right click or on a touch enabled device I would swipe up and click add. In here I'm going to type banana and a piece of fruit as its description. And then I'm going to click Add Glossary Term. That's going to take the information all off to Office 365, create the term and bring back all the refreshed information. This is really useful for when other users are using the app at the same time or they're using the web part on SharePoint Online because then if they're changing information you're going to be able to see it as well. If I scroll down then you can see that my banana term is there and what I can do is right click that and click Edit. And then displayed a, a dialog box which is pre-populated with all the information of that term. I'm then going to change that to yellow, a piece of yellow fruit. I can then click edit glossary term. That's going to send that information back off to Office 365 and if I click on it again you can see that it's then been edited. So how easy is it to delete something? Well just right click or swipe up and click delete. You'll then be prompted whether you actually want to delete the term or not click yes and then what it's going to do is sync with SharePoint Online and as you can see the item has gone from B. If I go to B then you'll see the item has gone. Let's imagine a scenario where we have a classroom environment with a teacher and a group of students. All the students have Windows 8 tablets and they all have this app installed. The app's URL is pointed towards their own my site and this means that they can create a glossary for every subject that they have. If they're in a, uh, in a lesson and they want to create a glossary on the fly, then they also have that option. So let me show you how to do it. We're going to right click or swipe up if you're on a touch enabled device and click add glossary. 
We can then type in a name and a, descri a description of our glossary. So I'm going to put in here ecology and I'm going to call it a list of terms to do with ecology. And then I'm going to click create glossary. This is going to create our glossary and then redirect the app towards it. So as you can see in the top left here, we've swapped the list to our new ecology list. As there's new, no new terms in, in this list, we get the option to add one. So let's do that. So I'm going to type in ecosystems and group of organisms. I'm then going to click add glossary term. And then this is going to populate the ecology list with that term. You can see how this might be a useful classroom environment tool because all the students are able to create multiple lists depending on their subject and then also add multiple terms within them. So that's how you'd create a blank new subject glossary. But what if you were a teacher and you wanted to be able to share a subject glossary with a group of students but already have predefined terms in it? Well, you can do that. Let me show you how. So I've just changed to my history glossary here and I'm going to go to the person icon at the top right hand side of the screen. This opens up the options pane. Down here in the CSV import section, I'm going to go ahead and click on import CSV file. CSV import will allow you to take a file which has a format of two columns, being a term column and a description column. The first entry in the CSV file must be headers for each column. The headers would be the word term and the word description. I'm going to import a CSV file into an existing list. So I'm going to go ahead and find the history one. And there it is. It's ticked to tell me that I can do that because it is a valid glossary. I'm going to go and click on import CSV file. And I already have a CSV file that I've already pre-filled out. And that's in my demo folder. I'm going to go ahead and click that and click on import CSV file. I'm then going to click on create glossary. This is going to go ahead and add all my terms to the history glossary and then refresh it. As you can see, all of them were added plus all of the different uh, letters were highlighted. I can go through and click on all the different terms which were added from my CSV file. So that's subject glossary for Office 365, our latest Windows 8 app. We offer custom branding and volume licensing on the solution. So if you have any queries regarding that or anything at all, please don't hesitate to email us at hello at sharepointedutech.com.